Hi, welcome to another webinar in our International Approvals and Global Market Access webinar series. My name is Sherwin Lee. I'm the International Approvals Project Manager here at Vista Laboratories. And today we'll be going over Central America market access for wireless electronic telecommunications and radio products. Uh, Central America is comprised of seven countries, Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Panama. So today we'll be uh, taking a dive into the type approval and homologation requirements for wireless products in these countries. So without further, further ado, let's begin. So these are the seven countries I just mentioned that comprise Central America um, and their associated type approval authorities. Um, today we'll be going over the type approval process and some of the requirements for um, type approval in each of these countries. And um, most of these countries do have very similar requirements, such as acceptance of FCC CE reports or recognition of the FCC or CE label. Um, but there are some minor differences um, in terms of exemptions. So um, today we'll be going over some of these details and hopefully get started on type approval for these countries for your products. So um, let's first begin with Belize um, and the Public Utilities Commission. The Public Utilities Commission, PUC of Belize, is the regulatory body in the telecommunications industry. Um, the telecom sector of the PUC ensures compatibility of all telecom broadcasting and radio communication equipment with the public switch telecommunications network through their type approval procedures. Um, this includes regulatory compliance requirements related to the frequency spectrum and telecommunications infrastructure for most com consumer electronics that we're familiar with. Um, the Public Utilities Commission also grants and regulates telecom and wireless approvals, and in most cases, they will accept regulatory test reports from other countries as a proof of compliance, so such as the FCC and CE Radio Equipment Directive compliance test reports. Um, no person or entity is allowed to import, install, make for sale, or use any um, or operate any equipment in Belize per the PUC regulations unless granted a permit for the equipment. Um, all products that utilize RF um, radio frequency and cellular technologies will require PUC type approval and certification before its import or commercialization. Um, some devices we're familiar with are uh, mobile devices, RFID, um, wireless devices. So there's two types of type approvals um, in Belize for wireless equipment. One is the PUC permit and the PUC license. So these we'll be discussing next. So as mentioned before, um, it's possible to obtain the PUC issued permit and also to obtain the PUC issued license. So all telecom radio frequency equipment must be granted a permit by the Public Utilities Commission um, in order to import, install, for, uh, sell, or use and operate in Belize. Um, so the PUC issued permit is a mandatory requirement for your, your uh, radio telecom products in Belize. Um, the PUC issued license is for uh, users of certain telecommunications equipment. Um, so you must obtain a license as required by law for the operation of certain equipment. So taking a look at some of the um, type approval required um, products uh, regulated under the PUC permit, um, radio receivers, transmitters, transceivers, and accessories. So many of these we are familiar with, um, transmitters, receivers uh, for amateur commercial use, um, citizen band transceivers, RF amplifiers, uh, radio broadcast transmitters, um, RF transmitting antennas, walkie-talkies, um, drones. So these are um, some of the radio receivers and transmitters that are uh, regulated under the uh, PUC permit. Moving on, still under the PUC permit, satellite communication equipment such as low noise amplifiers, receivers, modulators, uh, very small aperture terminals, VSATs, satellite dish, freehorns, RFIF amplifiers, and other telecommunications equipment 
So uh, customer premise equipment excluding the following um, regular telephones, uh, fax machines, cordless phones, cell phones, um, cellular telephones, um, and then other telecommunications equipment um, and customer premise equipment connecting to any licensed telecom providers network. And last on the regulated type approvals list under the PUC permit are electromagnetic radiating devices such as industrial and laboratory electric equipment, induction and dielectric heating equipment, uh, remote radio control equipment, radar equipment, and electromechanical apparatus. So that sums it up for the products um, on the type approval mandatory list for the PUC issued permit in Belize. Uh, now moving on to the uh, telecommunications equipment regulated and required for the issued license by the Public Utilities Commission. So the type approval list of telecom and radio equipment um, that require a PUC issued license. Uh, this is a non-exhaustive list. So it goes as follows, land mobile radio transceivers, uh, base stations, handheld radios, repeater systems, marine radio transceivers, satellite TV systems, um, internet satellite systems not registered through the local internet service provider, amateur radio operators, citizen band radio operators, uh, aircraft radio, aeronautical band radios, point-to-point -point links, and paging systems such as vehicle location systems. So um, these are all the telecommunications and radio frequency equipment that must be granted a permit by the Public Utilities Commission prior to its use or sale. Um, for certain telecom equipment, we need to get a license as well. And for products that do not require approval, um, we can provide in a letter of exemption signifying that no type approval is required um, to help with customs to avoid any issues upon import of your equipment to Belize. So um, that about wraps it up for the uh, list of type approval required equipment. And now we'll be moving on to some um, documentation testing requirements and supplier responsibilities. Okay, so what are the actual uh, type approval requirements uh, required by the Public Utilities Commission, PUC of Belize? Um, so in terms of documentation, we'll require a manufacturer dealer's application for type approval. Um, technical files are required, such as um, product containing product specifications, operational descriptions, user manual, um, FCC, CE test reports are recognized and accepted. Um, type approval certificate or letter from the country of origin. So um, in the case of the USA, it would be regulated under the FCC and an FCC grant um, or equipment authorization is required. And in the European Union, um, a notified body technical uh, examination certificate would be required. Um, other forms of type approval um, by other countries um, and authorities of other countries or certification schemes may be accepted. Um, that would be at the discretion of the, uh, of the PUC. And a, an approval agreement and authorization is required. Um, in terms of testing, local testing in country is not required, um, although samples may be requested for verification. So that's something to keep in mind when, um, when thinking about uh, sending samples out. Um, local representative is not required for the certificate. Um, lead time, um, which includes uh, testing of the samples, reviewing the application, and granting of the uh, actual type approval certificate for the equipment. So it'd be three to six weeks for customer premise equipment and um, up to 12 weeks for switches and other high capacity equipment. Um, in terms of validity, the certificate does not expire. Um, renewals are not required unless the product has been modified. So in general, um, the PUC needs to be notified and advised on the changes to determine if a new type approval is required. Um, family model grouping is allowed, um, but they need to have the same radio module and have to be very identical, especially in terms of RF characteristics. And modular approval is allowed for radio modules. Now, moving on to some of the supplier responsibilities and some of the surveillance um, procedures. So, um, in terms of the product marking and labeling, there's no unique mark or labeling requirement 
um, FCCC labels uh, and markings are acceptable and also recognized throughout Belize. Um, uh, maintenance of equipment and systems is a big deal in Belize, so there should be something in place for efficient repairs and reasonable measures to ensure that equipment and services provided are also well maintained um, and replaced if necessary within reasonable time. Um, the, the Public Utilities Commission may issue directives or actions to the supplier if they receive complaints from the customers and suppliers must respond to these directives issued by the PC within 28 days. So um, there are uh, quite some uh, stringent surveillance procedures in Belize. Um, equipment will be seized by customs prior to entering the country if there's not compliance found um, and re-exported if it's not certified for Belize. Uh, fines of up to 10,000 uh, BZD for unlicensed products. So that's roughly 5,000 US dollars for unlicensed devices and up to 500,000 BZD for um, licensed devices as well as possible imprisonment. So that's um, 500,000 Belize dollars is roughly 250,000 US dollars as well as possible imprisonment. Um, so that about sums it up for the supplier responsibilities. Now moving on to um, the basic type approval authorities that we'll be going over today. So just to come back to the brief overview, um, so far we've gone through Belize and the Public Utilities Commission, and now we still have six more countries to go. Moving on to Costa Rica, and the regulatory body there is SUTEL. SUTEL is the Superintendencia de Telecommunications, or the Telecommunications Regulatory Body Regulating Agency in Costa Rica. Um, products that use radio frequency and cellular technologies will require approval and certification prior to importation and commercialization in Costa Rica. Um, they in, they're in charge of managing the radio frequency spectrum, and they issue approvals for telecom radio equipment, and they regulate its operation. Um, they also accept the FCC reports as grants and grants as proof of compliance for non-cellular devices. Um, some examples of products that uh, are regulated by SUTEL are cellular devices, RFID, Wi-Fi uh, products, and Bluetooth radio products. So um, they do accept some foreign reports as uh, and grants as proof of compliance for non-cellular devices, but for cellular devices, in-country testing is required um, in Costa Rica. So there are two main methods of type approval for wireless products in Costa Rica under SUTEL. Um, number one is the approval of mobile terminals or cellular devices, a regulation RCS 358-2018. Um, this superseded regulations RCS 332-2013, and this is in effect um, very recently uh, as of December 2018. So um, this is a new standard added to the field of testing for cellular products and provides additional guidelines for RF um, testing, performance testing, battery testing. Um, so this applies to cellular equipment and um, the next is the free band approval, uh, which is approval of equipment operating in the free bands, regulation RCS 154-2018. Uh, this superseded regulation RCS 431-2010 and was also in effect 2018, uh, uh, May of 2018. So um, the updates here pertain to uh, modular and family certification. So this now accounts for approval, uh, modular approvals and family certifications. Um, regarding modular certification, so it's possible to certify different devices that share the same radio module, as long as the differences between the devices are mainly aesthetic or the color, appearance, etc. So um, if the module's uh, part of the equipment that makes use of the radio spectrum, then you can do modular approval. So family certification is also new in, the, um, in RCS 154. Um, it's possible now to certify as a family um, if uh, the manufacturer supplier declares that these devices are all very similar in terms of their characteristics, um, in terms of the brand, hardware, software versions, frequency, output power, all of these technical requirements, radio characteristics are all the same or very similar. So um, previously uh, in the old standard, um, only wireless LAN applications were listed, but now in the new one, um, it covers many more uh, radios and applications such as short range devices, uh, radio frequency identification, radar, and etc. 
So these are some of the differences with the new standards, which are still uh, relatively new and updated as of 2018. Now diving in a bit more into the mobile terminal approval side, um, some of the updates from RCS 332 to 358, um, hardware software changes require an update to the certification. So um, any changes to an existing or development of additional hardware versions of an already approved solar device will require an update to the current certificate. So um, any hardware, so previously software changes already required um, an effort to update the certificate and now changes to any hardware versions will require it as well. Um, labeling requirements, physically affixed e-label must be accessible via the device menu. So um, labeling is only accepted in the form of a physically affixed label on the device, um, but an e-label is acceptable if it is accessible through a physical menu of the device. Um, for physical labels, um, it must be made of a durable material and um, must be provided to SUTEL at the, um, when applying for type approval so they can verify that it is um, indeed accepted um, and fulfills the requirements. Market surveillance will be enforced to ensure the compliance of the above requirements as well as labeling requirements. Um, right now, uh, so because of this update, um, labeling requirements are a lot more strict um, in Costa Rica. Okay, so now we'll look um, more closely at the updates for the free band approval, which is basically any wireless radio device that is not a cellular device, um, which will not require any in-country testing. So one of the main updates for free band approval is the additional regulated frequency bands um, from RCS 431 to RCS 154. Um, before the uh, addition or modification of addendum number seven, um, only uh, wireless local access network bands were listed previously. So, 2.4 megahertz, uh, 2.4 gigahertz bands, uh, and the five gigahertz bands. Um, now, um, with the update, um, you can see there's a lot more bands um, and applications for applications such as radio frequency identification, short range devices, and radar. Um, so this is one of the main changes. Um, so now there are more frequency bands regulated under SUTEL. Okay, so I hope that was helpful for determining um, which uh, approval scheme will apply to your product um, and as, uh, as well as some of the updates pertaining to the new standards. Now we'll be moving on to the specific type of approval requirements necessary to get the certificate and some of the responsibilities afterwards for suppliers. So what are the specific type of approval requirements um, accepted by SUTEL? So uh, documentation is required, um, product spec, operational description, user manual. Most of these things are found in either the technical file for your CE test reports or your um, uh, FCC submissions for the equipment authorizations. Um, label example. Um, so. Uh, if the device uses cellular frequencies, then SUTEL must know the label beforehand, um, and the label must have the model, brand, IMEI, uh, number, frequency, etc. And um, in terms of the documentation, um, it must contain the hardware software versions of the product, um, because if there's any changes to the hardware, both hardware and software versions, now it's required that the certificate be updated. Um, and SUTEL accepts um, and prefers the FCC reports, but um, C reports also acceptable in most cases. Um, uh, in terms of the testing, in-country testing is not required for free band approval, and in-country testing is required for mobile terminal cellular approval. Um, it, it, if that's the case for you, then you will require one RF conducted measurement sample and two normal operational samples, so three samples in total. Um, local representative is not required for a type of approval in Costa Rica. Um, lead time, two to six weeks for free band approval, um, which is a non solar device, and a little bit longer, four to eight weeks for mobile terminal approval for a solar device. Um, and the certificate does not expire. Um, in terms of renewals, um, it's not required unless a product has been modified. So um, any approvals issued under the older standards are still in compliance. But um, as I said before, any updates, including software hardware versions updates, will require an update to the certificate. And now, which means that um, it will have to be uh, um, approved as per the new standards in 2018. 
um, family model grouping is allowed, and um, if it's the same radio module and identical in most characteristics, especially the frequencies of operation, output power, uh, field strength, and antenna gain, um, module approval is allowed. Um, so for uh, applications for modular certifications require a data sheet of the end device, um, which is the host device in which the module will be integrated in. So moving on to some of the supplier responsibilities in terms of the product label, product marking, um, it must be affixed onto the product, um, permanent and legible, and it can be printed in black and white. So there's two options for the Sutel product label as shown here. Um, on the left, you can have the Sutel logo symbol as well as the type approval number and year, um, or a black and white label um, on the right, which um, just the, the word Sutel um, and, and also the type approval number and, lab and uh, year. Um, E-labeling is allowed and there's no restriction on the material used for the label. Um, in terms of surveillance, um, the General Quality Directorate, uh, DGC, will conduct inspections um, uh, to verify compliance with the requirements and there are penalties in the case of non-compliance. Okay, so um, Costa Rica did have some in-country testing required if it's a seller device. Um, now moving on to the other countries, which I believe most of which do not have any in-country testing requirements. So next we'll be talking about uh, SIGET, um, the type of approval authority of El Salvador. So SIGET is the authority uh, regulating um, electrical and telecommunication products in El Salvador. Um, they're a government regulator, regulating body and they manage the electricity generation and telecom telecommunications infrastructure and industries in El Salvador, including radio frequency spectrum usage and assignment of um, specific frequencies from the 3 kilohertz up to 3,000 gigahertz range. Um, they accept CERED reports as proof of compliance for telecom wireless products, um, allowing for importation into the country, as well as FCC reports. Um, they define technical standards for approvals and assign bands of operation in El Salvador. So products that utilize RF, um, cellular or satellite technology will require approval and certification in order to be sold in El Salvador or are used. Some examples, Wi-Fi products, Bluetooth, RFID, radar, satellite, telecommunications devices. Okay, so quickly going over some of the type approval requirements pertaining to SIGET in El Salvador documentation. Again, FCC, CE, uh, CE technical files, um, FCC submission documents, um, product um, specifications, operational descriptions, user manual, um, other documents um, may be required such as block diagrams, schematics, um, label example, in internal external photos are required. Um, In-country testing is not required for El Salvador. Those samples may be requested for verification, and this is not a common occurrence. Um, local representative is not required. Lead time, roughly four to eight weeks. Um, no expiration on the uh, certificate, certificate um, and does not expire. Uh, renewals, um, so not required unless the product has been modified. And um, family model grouping is normally not allowed, but it can be based on the FCC CE approval. Uh, module approval um, is allowed um, based on the FCC CE reports. So if it's a modular approval um, for FCC, then it's allowed to do the same for SIGET in El Salvador. And labeling, FCC CE label is accepted and recognized in El Salvador as well. Okay, so that about sums it up for some of the basic requirements for El Salvador and SIGET. Um, again, going back to the labeling, uh, most of these countries do not have any specific um, special label for the country except for Costa Rica, um, and most of them will accept the FCC and CE labels, um, though it's always advised to have those labels on your products no matter what country you are going to. So moving on to Guatemala and um, SIT. So SIT of Guatemala is the telecommunications regulatory body, and it's a technical body of the Ministry of Communications, Infrastructure, and Housing. Um, its main functions are to supervise the operation of the radio spectrum, manage the telecom registry, and apply where appropriate sanctions um, required by the general telecommunications law. They also uh, liaise with international telecom organizations. So um, 
So there's no specific requirement that prior approval is necessary before the importation of um, equipment. So um, the general telecom law of Guatemala, they don't specify any prior approval for radio or electronic equipment is necessary prior to importation. Um, but um, we still need to request um, uh, by sending a letter of inquiry to SIT that we will be um, uh, importing and um, provide the technical specifications for the product. So um, while it's true that there um, there's no required re approval um, prior to um, shipping, but um, there's uh, we still need to send a letter of inquiry. And um, there are exemptions for low power devices. So there are quite a few exemptions for um, some common wireless radio products, for example, short range devices, Wi-Fi products using indoor, um, uh, use indoor uh, with low transmit output power. So um, if it's less than 500 milliwatts output power, then it can be imported without notifying uh, SIT. Um, however, for other products, outdoor products um, in the 2.4 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz bands, we should inquire with SIT to obtain their ruling on the specific product. Um, in some cases, SIT will accept proof of compliance from other countries, um, such as CE uh, compliance uh, technical files or um, FCC test reports. So for exemptions, we still need to apply for a letter of notice to signify that no type of approval is necessary for the specific device prior to import or sale. But again, um, uh, SIT accepts FCC and CE test reports, so um, the process of approval uh, um, uh, is easy anyways. So um, an exemption letter may be required for low power devices. So the specific type approval requirements for SIT in uh, Guatemala, looking at the documentation, so product specs, schematics, user manual, FCC or CE test reports, label example, internal external photos. Um, so again, you can apply for exemption, which will have to still um, file an inquiry with SIT, or you can get your product type approved, um, which will take roughly three to six weeks, um, and obtain the certificate with SIT. Um, so testing, in-country testing is also not required. Um, local res representative is also not required. So again, the lead time would be three to six weeks for the approval and the certificate, which does not expire. Um, renewals aren't required unless the product has been modified or changed. And in terms of labeling, just the uh, FCC and C labels um, will suffice for this requirement. Okay, now next we will be moving on to CONATEL, uh, the regulatory body in Honduras. So a brief overview of CONATEL. Um, CONATEL is the National Telecommunications Commission. Uh, it's a state agency that executes through regulation and coordination the telecom policy in the Republic of Honduras. Um, they issue regulations and technical standards required for the provision of telecom services, uh, grants, equipment authorizations, permits, registrations, licenses for telecom, uh, provision of telecom services, and other, other um, renewal modifications, etc. Um, so wireless products and equipment that connect to the public network along with other RF equipment will require type approval and certification in Honduras. So um, this is, uh, for example, um, for radio frequency, Bluetooth devices, cell phones, RFID devices, and for and on radio frequency, routers, modems, telecom, gateways. Um, they do accept and recognize FCC and C certificates and reports, as well as um, IFETEL and TELEC. IVTEL is um, a Mexican certification uh, and TELEC is Japan, Japanese. So um, they do um, uh, accept um, some of these reports from other countries. So moving on to the uh, specific type of approval requirements for CONATEL in Honduras. So moving on to documentation. So product specs, schematics, user manual, Test reports, um, uh, label example, internal external photos. So um, the, the documentation must contain the technical parameters, such as the frequency range, modulation modes, um, as well as the physical and environmental characteristics are required. So such as power supply, energy consumption, physical dimensions in uh, weight in the metric system, operating temperatures, um, temperatures of transportation, storage, operation of the equipment, um, temperatures must be indicated in degrees Celsius. And test reports, as mentioned earlier, FCC, CE, IFTEL, TELEC test reports are accepted. Um, 
So if you, the one caveat to that is if you're using the RED, which is the Radio Equipment Directive Technical Documentations for CE, um, you must also provide a certificate from an authority with an online listing of its certificates. So the certificate must be searchable online um, if using uh, if going with the RED documentation because we know that certificates for um, type examination for CE are not publicly um, searchable. So um, testing in country testing is not required. Um, so, uh, again, we can use the international test reports for this to obtain um, CONATEL approval. Um, local representative is now required. Um, lead time, 6 to 12 weeks, validity of the certificate, uh, no expiration, and uh, renewals if the product has been modified. Um, labeling, FCCC label is accepted, and there are exemptions for low-power devices. So approval is voluntary if the product's output power is less than 10 milliwatts. Um, so um, this is the approval requirements. Hunters will take a look at all of these documents um, and do an application technical review um, and validate this information during the approval before issuing the certificate. So next we'll be moving on to Nicaragua Telcor and Panama ASEP. So Telcor uh, regulatory entity um, is the telecommunications regulatory body in Nicaragua. Um, they're responsible for RF spectrum management and um, granting permits and licenses for telecommunications products. Um, they define the technical requirements for frequencies in the 900 megahertz, megahertz range, uh, 2.4, 5.2, and 5.3 gigahertz range, uh, as well as 5.4, 5.7 gigahertz range in Nicaragua. And they accept FCC and CE test reports as well. Um, requirements here are uh, similar for the most part um, to the other countries. Uh, FCCC documents are accepted and country testing is not required. Um, and uh, there's no local rep necessary or country specific labels. Um, lead time is 10 to 6 weeks. Now moving on to ASEP of Panama. So ASEP is the uh, National Public Services Authority of Panama. They not only uh, control and regulate telecommunications products, but they also uh, control the provision of public services such as uh, drinking water, san sanitation, electricity, um, as well as telecom, radio, television, and um, other public services. Um, they also accept FCC and CE submissions. So um, uh, some devices that are regulated are mobile phones, um, personal tracking devices, transceivers, and etc. So Panama does have some exemptions um, for type approval. Um, in the case of terminal equipment and devices used to access networks of the dealers of telecommunication services, um, these products are exempt. Uh, broadcasting, television, transmitting equipment are exempt from type approval. Passive components of transmission systems um, and other uh, equipment determined in the future um, will be exempt as well. So the approval requirements here, documentation, FCC, CE documents um, are required. No in-country testing is required and a local rep is not necessary. Um, so yeah, existing test reports can be leveraged to obtain this approval, um, which will be uh, reviewed and, uh, and reviewed technically in detail, um, especially those that pertain to the national frequency allocation plans. Um, uh, validity, no expiration, and lead time four to eight weeks. Okay, so that sums it up for all of the countries in Central America and their type approval authorities. Um, I hope we were able to cover some of the important information um, in the short time we have here and you were able to get an understanding of the different requirements and um, country-specific requirements for the countries in Central America. Thank you for your time today, um, and I appreciate you listening in on this webinar. So um, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to send us an email at info at vista-compliance.com. So um, Vista Labs is a 17025 accredited EMC RF testing lab. Um, we specialize in wireless and electronic products. We're also a 17065 accredited product certification body recognized in the U.S., Canada, um, the European Union, and many other countries. Um, we're also providing international approval certification services.
for over 150 countries. So if you have any regulatory um, questions or any uh, product specific questions for your product or any general inquiries, feel free to just let us know anytime um, and we'll be happy to take a look and provide a consultation for uh, your specific um, your specific situation. So um, I hope this webinar was helpful um, and you were able to get some insight on Central America type approval for uh, wireless and electronic products um, and dealing with the regulatory bodies in these countries. So um, feel free to let us know if you have any questions. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.